You ought to have seen what I saw on my way to the village through Mortensen's pasture today. Blueberries as big as the end of your thumb. Real sky blue and heavy and ready to drum in the cavernous pail of the first one to come. And all ripe together, not some of them green and some of them ripe. You ought to have seen. I don't know what part of the pasture you mean. You know, where they cut off the woods. Let me see. It was two years ago. No. Can it be no longer than that? In the following fall, the fire ran and burned it all up at the wall. Why, there hasn't been time for the bushes to grow. That's always the way with the blueberries, though. There may not have been the ghost of a sign of them anywhere under the shade of the pine. But get the pine out of the way, you may burn the pasture all over until not a fern or grass blade is left, not to mention a stick, and presto. They're up all around you as thick and hard to explain as a conjurer's trick. It must be on charcoal they fattened their fruit. I taste in them sometimes the flavor of soot. And after all, really, they're ebony skin. The blue's but a mist from the breath of the wind, a tarnish that goes at the touch of the hand, and less than the tan with which pickers are tanned. Does Mortensen know what he has, do you think? He may, and not care, and so leave the chewing to gather them for him. You know he is. He won't make the fact that they're rightfully his an excuse for keeping us other folk out. I wonder you didn't see Lauren about. The best of it was that I did. Do you know, I was just getting through what the field had to show and over the wall and into the road, when who should come by with a Democrat load of all the young chattering Laurens alive but Lauren, the fatherly, out for a drive. He saw you then. What did he do? Did he frown? He just kept nodding his head up and down. You know how politely he always goes by. But he thought a big thought. I could tell by his eye. Which being expressed might be this in effect. I have left those there berries, I shrewdly suspect, to ripen too long. I am greatly to blame. He's a thriftier person than some I could name. He seems to be thrifty. What hasn't he need with the mouths of all those young Laurens to feed? He has brought them all up on wild berries, they say, like birds. They store a great many away. They eat them year-round, and those they don't eat, they sell in the store and buy shoes for their feet. Who cares what they say? It's a nice way to live, just taking what nature is willing to give, not forcing your hand with harrow and plow. I wish you had seen his perpetual bow. And the air of the youngsters, not one of them turned, and they look so solemn, absurdly concerned. I wish I knew half what the flock of them know, of where all the berries and other things grow. Cranberries and bogs and raspberries on top of the boulder-strewn mountain, and when they will crop. I met them one day, and each had a flower, stuck into his berries as fresh as a shower. Some strange kind, they told me it had no name. I've told you how once, not long after we came, I almost provoked poor Lauren to mirth by going to him, of all people on earth, to ask if he knew any fruit to be had for the picking. The rascal. He said he'd be glad to tell if he knew. But the year had been bad. There had been some berries, but those were all gone. He didn't say where they had been. He went on. I'm sure, I'm sure, as polite as could be. He spoke to his wife in the door. Let me see, Maine. We don't know any good burying place. It was all he could do to keep his straight face. If he thinks all the fruit there grows wild is for him, he'll find he's mistaken. See here for a whim. We'll pick in the Mortensons' pasture this year. We'll go in the morning, that is, if it's clear. And the sun shines out warm. The vines must be wet. It's so long since I picked, I almost forget how we used to pick berries. We took one look round, then sank out of sight like trolls underground, and saw nothing more of each other or heard. Unless when you said I was keeping a bird away from its nest, and I said it was you. Well, one of us is, for complaining it flew around and around us, and then for a while we picked till I feared you had wandered a mile. And I thought I had lost you. I lifted a shout, too loud for the distance you were, it turned out. For when you made answer, your voice was as low as talking you stood up beside me, you know. We shan't have the place to ourselves to enjoy. Not likely when all the young Laurens deploy. They'll be there tomorrow, or even tonight. They won't be too friendly. They may be polite. The people they look on as having no right to pick where they're picking. But we won't complain. You ought to have seen how it looked in the rain. The fruit mixed with water and layers of leaves. Like two kinds of jewels. A vision for thieves. <laughs>